Hello everybody, welcome to Startup Shark Tank Showcase. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the brainchild behind the Startup Shark Tank Showcase, Jose de Dios. Can I get a round of applause? Thank you, Bridget. I get too much credit. All right, look at this. Another edition of the Sharks Tank live event, and we're packed again. Woo! Every month, for the last 28 months, we've had you folks come out to support our startups, our community. So from Startup Showcase to you, how about a loud round of applause and a cheer? Yeah! I won't take one of our angels fire away, but there's some really interesting news that's, that's uh, been circulating and, and, and the angel met the startup here and the startup's getting ready to, uh, to get bought out. So that's really cool. We have you folks, we have the startups. Out here amongst you folks, we know there's investors and we love all the investors in the tank. We also have our investors over here, our judges. Their job tonight is gonna to be a difficult job because there's a lot of amazing startups here. They have to pick the top five. So they have to pay close attention. They're gonna pick based upon the criteria of who would they most likely invest in tonight? Who would they take out their checkbook for tonight and cut a check to? We're gonna call those startups up and then what we do is we allow the crowd to choose the ultimate winner. And the prizes are they get to sit with the sharks and talk about potential term sheets. So you guys ready to hear the startups? Yeah. Okay, we have this large area right here. It's called the, the, the pit. I want everyone in the pit now. Come on, come on in. You, if you don't come in, we don't start. Come on over, right in here, up front. Come on in. All right. Come on in. Awesome. Do you think we should bring chairs next time? I love it. See? I love it. Say it again. Do we need chair? Awesome. Okay. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you be professional and that you please don't talk while the startups are presenting. Are we ready to do this? Woo! In no uncertain order, but there is a certain order. Bridget, would you please have a seat? They get two minutes. And Bridget, our lovely timekeeper, she's also the co-founder of Startups Showcase. We'll be keeping time. If I could please get Olga Uchinova with Prosto Labs. It's reports made easy. Olga, come and tell us your story. Hello everyone, my name is Olga Bukhonina and today I will be presenting to you the uh, Stingray report. Imagine Thanksgiving is coming up and everyone will be going to the store to buy the apple pies, right? You all will be buying the apple pies, you will be looking how many slices you need to buy. It's simple. When it comes to building the reports on a spreadsheet, it's complicated. It takes one to two hours to build one. What we do? We present you the reports in simplified format and visual and in five easy steps. And the easy steps are connect, analyze, create, present and organize. When it comes to the market, our market targets are small and mid-sized companies who are looking for the easy and cheap solutions. When it comes to the money, we are providing the reports free of charge, 10 reports a month. Later on, for professional editions, we will be charging 45. So 10 reports free of charge, who wouldn't want that? When it comes to our team, team it consists of the two co-founders, yours truly, and uh, Evgeny, we both have a background in software, hardware, sales, and etc. 
When it comes to, comes to our competition, Tableau, Unspot Fire, Vimeo Analytics, you name it, one of our standing factors and our advantages is we provide reports and make them simple. You can build them under five minutes. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that we are asking for $250,000 to complete our project and escalate it and take it to the market. And I want to leave this speech with one thought. When you go home today and you go on the streets and you take a look what's happening, you will see that there is a lot of billboards and all these billboards have some sort of graphical and visual. Think about what our report can do for you. To do this is easy. We want to make to do this the same way. Thank you very much. My name is Olga Bukhonina and I represent Stingray Reports. All right. Thank you, Olga. Roger or, or Hyder, do you have a question? Yeah, Olga, great presentation. Um, so you compete with Tableau. Tableau is used by at least half of Soma-based companies. How do you plan to compete with them, number one? And number two, um, you said you mentioned that you can integrate, or on your website says you can integrate with Salesforce. Now, is it a one-click solution, meaning all the data can be transferred to your platform? So basically, one thing is we cannot compete with Tableau. They are an uh, elephant or a whole monster which you cannot compete with. But, Tableau installation and implementation takes a team of the IT engineers. We are targeting your mom, my mom, and his mom. But they need to build that report for their basic needs. So you take that CSV file, import it to our database, and quickly build the report under three minutes. That's all. Fantastic. So Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead and the, hand the mic to the next startup. How was that, ladies and gentlemen? Did you like that? <laughs> so it's just a little taste. I'd like to take the moment now to introduce our STEAM panel. These nice folks take the time out, just like you did on a Friday night, to sit down and see who the future, who in the future they would like to invest in. The first person I'm going to come up, call up here, the first shark is Manny Fernandez. He came to the very first Startup Shark Tank Showcase, and he has some fun news to tell you. Manny, come on up, buddy. How about a hand for Manny Fernandez? So I was at the very first event, and they had people pitching, but they had a startup that was a gentleman named Jeff. And Jeff came up to me and kind of took my business card and sent me an email. I was busy, I didn't respond. So he added me on LinkedIn. And later on, he had someone that I knew introduce me. He said, hey, we're the guy that I met at Startup Showcase. So I funded this company called Connected Data. And just Monday, they're acquired by a public company. You're supposed to, you're supposed to clap right now. Now, this ecosystem wouldn't have happened unless it was for Jose. So it's a congratulations to us all. I'm looking forward to the next startup to fund. But didn't you just have a birthday recently? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. That was a surprise birthday gift. Thank you so much, everyone. The next judge that I'm gonna call up here is also a veteran of startups, Shark Tank Showcase. He's become a personal friend and uh, an avid supporter. His company has funded a few startups right here on our stage, Mr. Roger King. How about a round of applause? Message to you guys is just keep your message short. 
and clear. Let us know exactly what you do in the clearest of terms. Make it short, make it sweet. So I've said this before, but if I was trying to fund uh, the movie Aliens, I'd say three words, Jaws in Space. You get it, right? Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you so much. The next angel I'm going to call up, he was a startup founder, just like people out here. How many of you out there want to be a startup founder or have a startup idea? Come on, raise your hands, really. Yes. So, Andy Padma, I'll just say Andy. He has one of those long last names, and I apologize for tearing it up. Andy, come on up and give some words of advice and wisdom. A round of applause for Andy. Don't tell us you're worth millions and millions. 
So with that, have a great project plan and a realistic valuation, and you'll all be funded. Awesome, thank you. So, most recently here, I um, ran into this young man, and we've known each other for, for years, and um, he's been doing some really exciting things with his firm. And I said, Reza, would you like to come and be a, a shark on our, on our tank? And he goes, well, what do you do? And I explained it all, he goes, absolutely. So Reza, how about a few words to our audience about yourself and what you bring? Alex, 
Oh wait, excuse me. We do make mistakes. Massimo! Hi to everybody, my name is Max. I am a cryptographer and I am here to present CryptoLab. CryptoLab has developed a system called Cloud Searching Encryption. Cloud Searching Encryption is the only one system that is, uh, can search inside of the encrypted data. Uh, you can figure out to transfer your data inside of the cloud and uh, nowadays it's not possible without decrypting the data to search inside. Uh, we have uh, developed and uh, we have tested uh, an efficient way a searching engine that can search without decrypting the data. So, uh, you can image and figure out a billion of billion of data such as uh, as care, bank, uh, government can be now transferred with this disruptive technology in the public cloud. Um, we are <coughs> nowadays we are we are out of the testing phase. Uh, we are based here in uh, Santa Clara, and uh, we have a team of seven engineers and uh, me, I'm a mathematician, and. Uh, um, we are searching for human research to get muscle for our uh, for our company, and uh, so we are looking for some money. <laughs> Thank you, to everybody. Thank you. Greta, we have a question for us, please. So, how do you integrate to the systems or database? So, basically, this system can be integrated on top, and there is like. Uh, layer that could work uh, encrypting and decrypting the data uh, in, in independently from the encryption so you can do a standard encryption and you can choose your own encryption thank you very much now alexander with team hunt Hi everybody, I'm Alex Tsiplikin, I'm the founder of Team Hunt. Many people want to build a mobile app, and it seems to be easy once you have an idea. Just go online, search for an outsourcing company. There are thousands in Asia, Europe, Latin America. But in reality, many projects become horror stories because a wrong developer was working on your app. Success rate goes up significantly if the development team has actually worked before on similar technologies, features, platforms, and in similar domain, because they've been there, done that. When there is a mismatch, you're actually paying for their training. And nobody wins, because if a project fails, everybody loses. That is why we have launched Team Hunt. Teamhunt.co is a website where we showcase mobile development companies, making them look like rock stars. And if you are building a mobile app, we'll match a team with exactly the same expertise in technologies, features, platforms, and domain. The odds of success are high, and everybody is happy. We make money as a lead generation company. We charge 5% to development firms. They're happy to pay. Uh, we have launched our public beta two months ago, enrolled 40 teams. I've been in this industry for nine years. I'm a PhD in data science. I have a brilliant marketing expert on my team, Rajesh Sethi, a serial entrepreneur, speaker, and author. We are raising now uh, $500,000 to grow our product. And with uh, a market size beyond 5 million, we plan to get to 50 million in five years. Teamhunt.co. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, Alexander, nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, so I have a variety of projects going on right now with Upwork.com. How do you see yourself positioning in the market you know, and competing with something that's known like Upwork, you know? Thank you for the question. We're different from Upwork because we're the only teams. Our teams are vetted and we make that deep matching to the expertise of the team. Uh, so when it, a team has done similar features on iPhone, they are able to deliver higher quality faster for you. 
So meaning you you actually look into the people that are on the platform to see whether they have done you know such such projects. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Alexander. Up next, we have Sergey with Income Club. We will help you become rich. Hello, uh, I'm Sergey Sivoy, co-founder of Income Club. Income Club is an online wealth management service uh, built on fixed income approach. It's like wealth front for conservative investors. Saving is hard for Americans. It's too hard to find the proper way how to save and invest. Saving accounts only pay just a fraction of what we need to keep up with inflation. Investing money in stock market doesn't make anything to guarantee a return. Even bond funds cannot guarantee anything. But, unlike bond funds, individual bonds will provide predictable return, as issuers must pay principal back at maturity and interest payments are fixed. Our website and mobile apps make saving easy via individual bonds investing. Income Club is a registered investment advisor. We make money just charging quarter percentage point on asset under management annually as an advisory fee. Our fixed income approach makes us completely different than majority of wealth management services, including robo-advisor leaders like Betterment and WealthFront. We target 75 million of digitally savvy investors. This group is rapidly expanding by millennials who have grown up with software and demand for online services. Our five years projections are 120,000 clients, 12 million dollars on the management, and revenue exceeds 25 million. At that point, Income Club would be a great acquisition target or can go public and expand internationally. I'm a seasoned entrepreneur with several exits and 10 years of wealth management background. My partner is a software engineer with 20 years of experience and we recently recruited VP of Marketing. All right, great. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you, Manny. So I know the space a little bit. Um, what type of traction do you currently have? Uh, we just launched beta this month and uh, step by step agree first beta users. And as I told that we're raising money uh, to agree first 1,000 clients next three, four months. And how are you going to fill both sides of the marketplace? So how are you going to get the investments? Uh, uh, we partner with interactive brokers as our custodian broker, and through these interactive brokers, we come directly to different uh, bonds marketplaces. Therefore, our algorithm uh, choose the right bonds for the right person. All right, thank you very much. Oh, one more question from Sam. Yeah, hi, just another question. What's your um, expected investor return? Um, we did uh, some back testing back to 18 years, and uh, for example, investing in bond, corporate bonds with like triple B, double A credit ratings could provide you return like 6% a year compared with 7.5 of stock market, but without any single year of negative return. It's a good, good tool to save money. All right, price. thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, moving right along here. Next up, we have Ivanka with Mara. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, an audience upstairs. I'm Ivanka, founder of Mirac. Mirac is a B2B SaaS platform that solves procurement problems for corporations and also create a fair marketplace for hotel meeting sales. Well, it's a lot of, you know, corporation big words. An easier way to relate with the audience is that nowadays you can easily book your personal travel through Expedia, Hotwire, TripAdvisor. But for meeting bookers, who represent over a trillion dollar market, they really are mostly rely on tools such as phone calls, emails, or sometimes even fax. It's really time for a change. And Mirac used our renovative SaaS platform to create a closed circle for, for making procurement system online. And you can plan your events, you can conduct online meeting, and uh, we invented tools such as my calendar, hotel scanner, and rate negotiator to help increase the efficiency, transparency, and also help you 
get a better uh, procurement result. And uh, uh, Mirac is incorporated three months ago, and now we are releasing our version one product. And uh, we are here, of course, for fundraising, and we're asking for three million. With this money, we will uh, further develop our mobile app, our version two products, and we'll increase our sales from currently, uh, currently we have uh, 20 corporate clients who are representing 200 million US dollar making buying power uh, in China. And uh, we will increase this number to about a billion with the funding we get. And uh, I myself was from hospitality background. We have a team of 16 people who are also industry elite. We believe in the mission of renovating our traditional industry with this modern international internet technology. And uh, the word Mirac actually is an actual vocabulary. It means the second star in Big Dipper. It shines and points directions. This is also what we want to do. Link the hospitality so industry much. to a brighter future. All right. Thank you so very much. Dr. King, question. Excellent presentation. Uh, you said you had 22 corporate users. Tell me a little bit about your revenue stream. Uh, our we just launched, so they are our pre-agreement corporations, and uh, our revenue model is two percent uh, transaction fee from the vendors who get some, who get the actual booking. And you're raising three, three million dollars. What's your pre-money valuation? Excuse me, I didn't hear you clearly. What is your pre-money valuation against the three million dollar raise? Um, because currently our Already signed clients are already representing 200 million US dollar buying power, and we believe we can close more deals with the team we have. And uh, of course, uh, we are going to present more more numbers before okay. we ask this money to be in our bank. Thank you so very much. Pre money valuation. Up next, Danielle, single ID. Hi, I'm Daniel. And I will tell a story. Imagine a retailer selling consumer goods. It has a great location, a well-designed store, good price, great product on the shelves. And each day, 1,000 customers pick goods from the shelves and proceed to the cash register. But wait, 68% of these customers with goods in their hands Heading up, end up leaving the store without buying anything. This is the harsh reality in e-commerce today. This customer has seen your ad, clicked on it, read your product description, it it had the on the cart button, and then go away. Why? More than half of this customer goes away for three reasons: credit card trust forced account creation and complicated checkout process. This 59% is a lot is a lot of um, is a, a lot of money left on the table. And the solution to regain this 59% is single ID. Single ID is an app where users can safely save their data inside and when they want to do a login, this magic app is able to send all the data answering a yes no question on the smartphone display. So with single ID users will get an instantaneous login way without any passwords and the businesses will be able to provide a first class login experience to their customers. And while any alternatives are trying to keep user data in the their server farm which costs a lot of money because huge privacy issues we successfully patented a flow that concentrates all this functionality inside the smartphone. And now we have to solve the chicken problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. So are, are you an e-commerce platform basically? That you're going to connect to e-commerce? No, we have reinvented the login. We have killed the password forever. Right, but you have to be integrated to all yeah, the Yeah, like, like the login like, like the login with Facebook button. You have developed the login with single ID button and we have developed an app. Right, so yeah, the, the challenge here I see is that you depend on integrating to many e-commerce. So 
Uh, yeah, the chicken and egg today comes black or um, you need to have fraction. Yes. Yeah. Was good. Thank you so very much. All right. Great job. Up next, John Horvath. Thanks, Jose. You're welcome. A time to. So I'm the founder of ATN2, the world's first smart action camera. So ATN2 is a patent pending camera system that locates, tracks, frames, and films a tag worn by you, the user, from a third person perspective, much like a Hollywood movie, but without the expensive camera operator. So why the action camera market? It's a large market. It's growing quickly. It went from zero to two and a half billion dollars uh, in about uh, six years. And we've identified two shortcomings. The first is that action cams today have fixed wide angle lenses, which makes them completely unsuited to uh, filming from a third person perspective. A10 2, however, uh, we combine a unique locating ability with a motorized zoom. And this enables uh, a feature we call auto framing. So you pre-select how you want to be framed. The camera module dynamically adjusts the zoom and the focus, keeping you in that perfect frame size. There's nothing like it. Um, the second problem we've identified um, is, uh, is content overload. So today's action cams shoot um, indiscriminately, and you end up with vast amounts of um, content, which is uh, very time consuming to manage and edit. With a 2 however, the tag that you wear um, is loaded with sensors, and they, they send the metrics back to the camera module, such as your acceleration and your velocity and your location. So any of these metrics can be used as a trigger for image capture. So we, make, we can make rules like, if I'm skiing, for example, the simple rule is only film me if I'm moving, or better, only film me if I'm jumping off a cliff. So you get higher quality footage and less of it, uh, so less time spent editing. Uh, we're looking to raise 500k to do some uh, integration with the camera and the motor, which will cut the size of our uh, product or prototype in half and uh, enable us to uh, crowdfund the first production run. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, John. Sharks. Manny, thank you. Towards the end, you talked about crowdfunding. Are you planning to do that? Um, after the next uh, prototype is built, I want to have it ready so that we don't have a big delay trying to design stuff. So. so tell me about your team. Who put this together? Uh, so it's myself and uh, my electrical engineer, Chio, who's here tonight. Um, just the two of us, and we have some contractors that do some coding or PCB layout and PCB design, that kind of thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've come a long way since your earlier presentation, and I'm impressed with how you reduced the size of your prototype. And it's, thanks, Roger. It's only going to get smaller. <laughs> Fantastic. How about a round of applause? Thank you. Up next, we have Hoala Grevy oh, yeah. with Power Box. How's it, everyone? My name is Hoala Grevy. I'm the founder and CEO of Power Box Incorporated. We provide seamless encryption for HIPAA compliant email. And before you ask, I'll answer your question with another question. When's the last time any of you got an email from your dentist? doctor, counselor, social worker, psychiatrist, or anyone else in the healthcare industry? Well, if you're like most Americans, the answer is never, or yes, I got an email, but I couldn't figure out how to log into that crappy portal. Why is this in healthcare so hard? Well, it's because of a federal regulation called HIPAA. I'm sure you guys know about it. And if you're a HIPAA regulation entity, and you're not encrypting your email, guess what? Big fines are in order. Well, I'm happy to announce, we at Powerbox, we found a better way to do it. Our encrypted email goes straight to the inbox in a readable format. We got rid of the portals, PGP keys, app downloads, keywords, all that rubbish. We're a post-revenue SaaS startup. We've got an office in San Francisco, a team of four, most of whom are here tonight. Our monthly recurring revenue is at $5,000. We're projected to reach $10,000 by the end of the year. We charge on an annual basis. We get the money up front, we pour it back into the business. Our cost to acquire a new customer, our CAC, is $84. And we, our average customer, we yield $587 per year. In other words, we make our money back within 45 days. Now on the advice of Sam Altman, a boy combinator, two weeks ago we tripled our pricing. And guess what? No one blinked. 
We're signing them up at the same pace as we did before. Now here's our ask. We are now raising a seed round of $1 million to scale out the product and to nail our distribution model. Myself, I've got 16 years experience in the email industry. There's nobody better on the planet to solve this problem than the team I've built and the team we're gonna build. Now Roger, when I first met you a couple months ago at this event, you mentioned you look for passion and commitment from an entrepreneur. Well guess what, I moved here from Hawaii in February. So let me ask you a question. Who in their right mind would move from sunny paradise Hawaii to chilly, drought-ridden Northern California if they didn't have those traits? Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Say that. We got questions. Fantastic. You definitely got the passion. Uh, do, tell me, uh, do you have any patents to keep others out of this? Great question, Roger. I'm glad you asked. We're going to set aside a certain portion of our seed funding to pursue uh, two patents. We've identified the patent attorneys we want to work with, but I believe it's the proper use of capital to pursue that after we've raised our seed round. So yes, there are at least two patents involved. Excellent. Great presentation. Thank you. Sharks. Paul, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> That's the question? Or is this? No. Shark. I understand that um, you guys are generating revenue. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's a great question. We're in 76, ah, we got 78 customers spread across 26 states plus Guam. Greg over there signed a customer in Mississippi. We closed one in Utah earlier this week. We can barely keep up with demand, seven days a week. They're just fine, inbound and outbound marketing. I mean, they're just knocking our door down. And how much money does that represent? Uh, well, we're grossing 5000 a month, monthly recurring, but we've also implemented multi-year contracts. We, we give them a discount in exchange for a multi-year business relationship. We get them all that money up front, we pour it right back in. So we're also implementing a multi-year strategy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, Sabhatkar with Boston Cloud. Good evening from Telecan search. We are building a very different kind of search engine than Google. Telecan search is inverting the web. Presented by the Google search results, we are bringing good long tail sites on the top, replacing brands mostly found on top of any modern search results. Google is good, but it is not enough. If someone gets a serious diagnosis like cancer from their doctor, they do not just want to see WebMD or Wikipedia results. They need to see more long tail options. Missing that may be difference between life and death. World is missing a great deal of good long tail results and a great number of good sites are missed well deserved traffic. Modern search engines are serving near the mean of a bell curve that satisfies most of the lookup style searches. However, there is a great deal of space on both sides of that mean of the car where users are eager to see more good long tail results. Teddy can bring the results that are good but not popular. The good web pages who do not have money to create a brand or a buzz on the name will get traffic by just being good. Users will be able to see more diverse results. Our crawler is very robust and scalable. Our challenge is how to reach those users who will be benefited from our results. Scaling our user base needs exotic marketing techniques. And what we are looking to hire, what we are looking for, we want to hire someone who can help us to go from daily, daily uni, uh, unique users to 100 million unique users. So if you know someone, please help us. Uh, we have, you know, I have 10 years of experience in text analytics. And uh, we have Harvard MBS and MIT researchers in our team. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mandy. So, there is a mentor of mine that was the first investor at Google. That was kind of late to market because they just took Ask G's public. And that was some time ago. My question is, why do you think there's a still a market for this? Can you repeat the question? Why do you feel there's still a market, enough customers to support a business? Yeah, what we are telling is that you use Google first to do the lookup, and then you come to us to do the research. 
because the, those long tails results are missing on the Google's first page or even second or third pages, what we are bringing. So people are missing, so unless they know what they are missing, you know, we need to create, the, we have to create the market. So is it a certain type of algorithm or what are you doing that's different? Yeah, absolutely. We are looking for sites that are not popular but they are good. For example, like in case of a mobile use case, uh, it's a restaurant uh, that is very good but not popular. We will try to bring them up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for being so patient. We are down to the last four startups. You guys are amazing. Up next, we have Mr. Derek Bluford with Quick Legal. Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? My name's Derek Bluford. I'm the founder of Quick Legal. Quick Legal is the first and only platform to allow you to instantly video chat or submit your questions and get on-demand legal advice. So, you're probably asking, what is on-demand legal advice today? There's so many companies coming on and starting with on-demand services. Is it an Uber? Do you get to talk to an attorney instantly? That's what we think on-demand services are. So, Quick Legal provides you with a platform where you select an attorney, and within about 15 or 20 seconds, you're actually talking to that attorney. There's no downtime, there's no talking to a customer service rep and filling out all these forms. You're actually getting on-demand legal advice. We just recently partnered with LegalZoom, who's the world's leading legal service company. So we're gonna be adding legal documents to our platform, as well as some flat rate legal services. Uh, Traxton so far, we've um, raised about 1.2 million. We have a couple thousand users, and we have attorneys um, paying for our subscription plan. We're generating about $65,000 a month, and uh, we plan to scale. And currently, we are only available in California. Um, let's see what else we uh, recently also did the other Shark Tank. Um, we're hoping that, that that's going to air this year. We've won Tech Week California out of about 2,500 other startups. Um, we were selected for Entrepreneur Magazine's Growth Conference, and um, we're just here to really try to provide effective and reliable and affordable legal services to the general public. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Sharks. Uh, so Derek, I really like your idea because of its reliability as you, um, as, as you say. Um, speaking from experience, um, you know, it's really difficult to get reliable and quick legal advice. I'm sure you've heard of Up Counsel? Yes. Right, so I'm sure you're their main competitor. Yes. So, so you, I guess my advice with you to be is um, to, to really pitch your, your your, the quickness in having them respond to customers and also uh, what was, what was, tell me a little bit about your pricing. So for the consumers to build traction it's free for a 15 minute uh, video chat or they can submit a legal question for free. Now if they want to move on and engage in an actual service contract with the attorney, the attorney will at minimum take 25% off his hourly rate and up to 40%. Oh, Alright and how long have you been, um, how long has this business been? Uh, we launched officially January, but we launched our beta back in October. Oh, great! And you already have legal Zoom as a yes. Great, congratulations on that. Thank you, I appreciate it. Go ahead, Reza. So, how many services have we done so far as far as between how many transactions? Uh, so, how many users have connected to attorneys, or how many uh, attorneys pay us? Actually, yeah, how many users pay that? So the users get to use the app for free, so they can connect to an attorney for free. On the back end, uh, the attorneys pay us, so we have about 130 subscriptions, and the attorneys pay us $500 a month, so it's a little over 65,000 a month that we're generating right now. Hi, go ahead and get the mic, please, so we can hear you. <laughs> Impressive work. Do you have a legal background? Is that I, how you got into this? I do. So um, I have a degree in legal studies. I did not take the bar yet, but I'm the only non-attorney to sit on the panel at Stanford Law School for a future of the law. So. Terrific. Thank Great you. job. There's no ask. You weren't asking for anything here? Just no, yes. We are ra we're raising our Series A. Um, we're raising $3 million at a $12 million valuation. And we're currently in a batch at 500 startups. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Great job. Up next, we have Dr. Besarat with DSRI, providing education. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Sharan Basavraspati from Bangalore, India. Uh, I established the company in Bangalore for four years back, predictive research. Uh, from the day one, right, we are independent and we had a revenues. And now we have a one million uh, yeah, turnover for this company. I'm a founder and senior data scientist. We have a 25 people. Yeah, the story is, I'm not rising the fun for that. Anyway, that is pragmatic approach we are taking. And I'm rising a fund for my another entity, Data Science Research Institute. It addresses the problem of 2 million graduates, tech graduates coming out every year in South, in the whole India. And 80% of them are remain unemployable. The academic, Academics blames the industry, industry blames the academics, government doesn't account, uh, doesn't take any responsibility and not accountable. In this scenario, we have started bridging the thing and we want to start the read, uh, the chain of schools. The DSRI, one we have already started with a 50-year-old yeah, engineering college, and we have an intake of 25 and 11,000 yeah, dollars. Uh, 11, 11K is our attraction, and we are trying to rise uh, the uh, 100K, 100,000 dollars to scale up the business. And we want to take it for a different city, such as South India. And we want to build a chain of all the finishing schools, which will bridge the gap between the industry and academics. This is an agenda. The problem is simple. Right? This is. Uh, the solution. I'm looking at the investors to fund this, and we have also been accepted by the Impact or Kick Accelerator. All right. uh, the program is in Kick Accelerator. Dr. We create a social impact. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Any questions? Sharks, can we please give the Doctor a question or two? Uh, Doctor. Yeah. Um, so I understand that your business has been in operation for a few years already and it's been positive. No, this is a new entity, four for four months old. For this, I'm setting a Seymour, correct? DSRI. Okay. Okay. This is in another entity. Okay. Sorry, I have I have analysis on your the one that you submitted. So I guess it's changed since then. No, that is it. This is Right. I founded a company. Yeah. company. Okay. This is the second venture of mine. Okay. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Bye. All right. Up next, we have Yang Wang. Ladies and gentlemen, please. We have just a few more, few more presenters, if we could please keep it down. Thank you so much. We're almost at the end there. If the person next to you is talking, could you please ask him to be quiet? Hello? We're almost done, we're almost at the end. Mr. Yang Wang with five Lago monkeys. Imagine monkeys jumping on a tree. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, uh, my name's Yang. I'm the founder of the Lago Monkey. Um, let me ask you here, how many people uh, play lottery? Raise your hand. Nine of millions, probably. So not a lot of people, but you guys are rich enough to not play lottery anymore. <laughs> it's okay, you have a few users. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, uh, half American population, that's about 160 million people uh, play lottery at least once a year in the United States. Uh, however, even given today's technology revolution, the lottery is still played in an old school fashion. Right? People have to walk into a local store, Buy tickets, keep them, and check result manually. Right? So, like this is a ticket here. Number of my ticket, I compare a winning number with my numbers. Really hard. Uh, also, a lot of uh, a lot of people uh, like to join together to play lottery in pool. Right? For them, they have to call around, meet each other, and check money paid by each person. Right? 
they don't know whether the lottery ticket is going to a lottery pool itself or by for the pool member who purchased the ticket personally. So lots of problems. My team has developed a mobile app to solve all the same conveniences. It uses uh, image processing technology to uh, digitize the ticket. You can use the phone, use the app to scan the ticket. It recognizes the numbers, save the numbers on your phone in cloud. You can share the ticket image among pool members, make mobile payment. So the app will be able to notify users upon joint result come up. So people love the app. So far, the, apps, the iOS version is ranked as top five lottery app in Apple App Store. Uh, I bootstrapped this uh, company by self-funding. Now I come here, Shark Tank, to raise investment. The funding will be used to fuel the company growth even faster. A bit about myself, I'm an engineer, built consumer internet application before. I'm in Silicon Valley, so it served 200 million global users before, very right? successful. Uh, Water is a big market. Uh, we want to be the leading mobile provider. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Wang. Thank you, Andy. Is there a legal uh, restriction or is it? A uh, very good question. So short answer, yes, it's legal, nothing wrong. You can use scan your ticket, share the image. Uh, even there was a lawsuit case like a uh, pool member came out and said, hey, this ticket, bringing ticket, this belongs to us, not only you. They go into the court, the judge said, the judge didn't put everybody into the jail. Say, hey, pool players, you guys are illegal. They didn't do it. The judge will say, oh, I will look at the case and split the checkbox. So, so short answer is yes, it's legal, but long answer is yes, it's complicated, regulated areas. Um, so that's why we need to uh, work with uh, gaming attorneys to navigate us to this journey. And we need investment. It's expensive, they are not cheap, so we need investment here to help us. Thank you very much. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, Reza. How about the numbers? How, how do you make money? Very good question. Okay, so we already make money today. Uh, the numbers are fifteen thousand dollars gross revenue even as of today, and that's the only single channel right now. That's like for people who want to scan tens of tickets, tens of numbers. We charge for MS scan, and we, uh, so we already get fifteen thousand dollars. Long runs, uh, we have lots of idea to make money. Like for instance, we can sell numbers. We know the national number trend. We say for those kind of numbers, if you purchase that, you have a higher chance to win because there are no other people purchase this ticket. We purchase number, we can do that. That's why, secondly, lottery pool management fees for private pools we charge, right? You guys do it, you. Thank you so activity. very much. But public it is free. But long-term fantasy sport, you heard that? Great job. Huge money. Up next, Duck Duong with Floss Time Inc. You probably saw their stand over here at the corner. It's a really cool product. Duck. Good evening, everyone. My name is Duke, and I'm a president of Floss Time. Floss Time is the first ever patent pending smart floss dispenser that's designed to help you floss every day. So, did you know that more than 80% of all Americans still do not floss on a daily basis? And more than a third of us don't floss at all. And you gotta admit, current floss dispensers are old, outdated, and simply ugly. In fact, most of us throw them in our medicine cabinet. Floss Time is the beautifully smart dispenser that mounts your bathroom mirror and automatically dispenses floss with a push of a button. We also make flossing fun, easy, and habit forming with the help of LED reminders. I myself am an engineering PhD from Stanford, specializing in polymer and plastics. Greg, our CTO, is a postdoc at Stanford with over 10 years of experience in electronic device. Finally, our CEO, Michael, is an author on over 100 issue patents and has had multiple successful exits. Out the gate, Floss Time will retail for under $25 at a manufacturing cost between $3 and $6. We're targeting 20,000 large retail stores in the U.S., including CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. Based on conservative estimates, we will become a 50 to 60 million dollar company within two or three years. And remember, that excludes online sales, smaller retailers, and it's just for the U.S. alone. We just closed our seed round this week and are seeking a million dollar Series A round to finance our commercial launch, including completing our first production build and making key hires. We're also launching a Kickstarter campaign on October 28th to raise product awareness and expand social media footprint. 
We expect flight time to hit the shelves by July of next year and an exit in two or three years when our annual revenue has approached $50 million. We can be acquired by CPG companies such as Colgate, Johnson Johnson, or Procter & Gamble. Thank you for listening. Fantastic. Great job, please. Andy. Great, great product and great team. Um, what, what are the risks? What are the challenges? That, what, what keeps you up at night? Um, one of the biggest challenges is, of course, now that we have this final design, moving that towards manufacturing, new production, quality testing. We have a very good team for that, but that is one of the challenges with hardware and that you know, software doesn't really have to deal with. Um, how long does the battery last? The battery is actually um, two double A's, lithium batteries, that will last between 9 and 12 months. And go ahead, Mandy. Mandy, the mic. How did you come up with this uh, business model? Oh, so the business model. The business model is based on our uh, selling price. CVS and Walgreens take a 45% cut, subtracting our manufacturing cost between three and six dollars. Plus, we add in about 20, 15 to 20 percent for marketing salaries, and then we can project based on the minimum number of units you need to sell. So, the same CVS you need to sell about one or two of these a month. And based on that minimum value and how many stores we penetrate over the next two or three years, that's how I come up with the model. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, up last, but certainly not least, he has the angel in the water, Mr. Patrick. Patrick, come on up and tell us your story. Howdy. Howdy, y'all. I'm Patrick McMillan. I'm the inventor of Angelo's Water. If I told you everything it would do, you couldn't believe me. But it's nice to say it will eliminate most pain in seconds just by spraying down the area, and it will conquer most diseases. Now, I can't do a demo up here in two minutes, but I've done some of you earlier last month. So any of those that have had a come to reality meeting with Angelo's Water, please raise your hands so the others can see. There's a few around there. And if you have pain and I haven't touched you tonight, come to me after this and I will. This little bottle is test market for $50. It costs a dollar to make it. That's 50 to one. This is the cream that actually removes wrinkles, blemishes, and scars, and prevents wrinkles. It's been test marketed at 150. It cost me three bucks. That's 50 to one. What woman in here would buy this for $150 and had a money back guarantee and you thought it would take away your wrinkles? Can I see some hands? How many men would buy it? I, I would buy it. Okay. I got wrinkles. <laughs> well, we'll take those away. <laughs> so, 50 to 1, 50 to 1. And what person would not pay $15 to put this little tube in their pocket they can take anywhere with them, wherever they can? It cures so many things you can't believe. We just had a gal here that used it for poison oak. Everybody was in terrible pain and nothing works for poison oak and it, it worked right away. So I don't need money for the water. I've got a million dollars in inventory. I have a website. I need some bright.com computer whiz bangs to get people to that website or the money to hire them. And I'm willing to give up 10% for that sweat equity or the money it takes to get there. The cream I need to manufacture, and I need about 100 grand to manufacture enough of that to do the testing to get it out there. So I'll give up 10% for that 100 grand. All right, Patrick, fantastic job. Actually, you polished up since the last time. Last time you were here. Thank you. Sharks, how about a question or two? Thank you, Roger. I'm sure you get asked this a lot. What can you tell us about the contents of the water? It's pure water with energy stuffed into it. There's nothing organic in it. There's nothing that can be measured in it. It's just plain water. <laughs> plain water, I love it. Pure water with energy. I figured out how to put energy into it. It's something nobody's ever done before. Well, you know, I, I gotta tell you, you, you think about you know the old Western movies with the guy that used to go around, the snake oil salesman. You know, I thought Patrick was this guy. And then I have a pain on, on one of my big toe knuckles. And I said, Patrick, okay, try it. Put it on my big toe knuckle. Guess what? There's no more pain there. And I'm not 
trying to sell this stuff. I'm just telling you, whatever the hell's in that thing, it works. All right. How about the pain in my heart? Can you, can you cure the pain in my heart? I'm sorry. Can you cure the pain in my heart? <laughs> Somebody's going to the drink yes, Yeah. Manny, you're too much. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for Patrick? Hey, no way. Thank you. Help me survey the crowd. How many people here, by a show of hands, will actually buy a type of water that he's providing? All right. There's some sales to be made. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for all of our startups? Now the sharks have their work cut out for them. They have to sit here and figure out who the top five are. Go ahead and network a little bit here for the next 5, 10, 15 minutes until they come to their decision. Then we'll pull the startups back up. Thank you so much. Startups. If we could please get each of the presenters to line up right here in front, just the presenters. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all so amazing. I have to tell you that sitting through those presentations and you just paid attention, um, it tells us a lot about our ecosystem. So, awesome job. Thank you so much for listening. I know you have your crowd favorites. Startups, line up up here. Come on and fill the gap up here. Come on in. Startups, come on over. Startup presenters. So in, in, <clears throat> the sharks have done their job. And uh, it wasn't easy, I gotta tell you. It was not easy at all. I just wanna say that I'm on Startup Showcase behalf and on my behalf, you know, I've had a startup, I've had a success, I had another startup, had a failure. And I just want to let you know that no matter what the judges decided tonight, you're all winners at Startup Showcase. For you to get up here and lay it out on the line and, and, and tell your story. It takes a lot. It takes a very special person to get up here on stage and give it all you got. With that being said, in no uncertain order, if I could have you join me up here on stage, these are the startups that the judges decided that they would most likely invest in today. Duke with Floss Time. Mr. Bluford with Wrigley. Income Club. The guy with some cool encrypted email. That's the top five. And we have a sponsor that usually chooses 
one person and let me confer with her. Okay, so Ms. Bridget Malay, co-founder of Startups Showcase and president of Applause Group, a sponsor for this event, she's chosen Olga to come on up and join us. If I could get the rest of you to please, this group in here, let's take a picture. A picture's worth a thousand words. Come on in. I want to say that I want you all to reach out to our community, reach out to our sharks, just because they didn't choose you doesn't mean they won't take your call and listen to you. Okay, how about a round of applause for our sharks? Okay, Manny Fernandez, come on up. This is the point, this is the time of the night where you, our audience gets to tell our sharks who you want them to put their money in. It's like a quick beta test. We've had some amazing companies come up here that you've chosen and they've gone on to raise money. Luxury. How many of you have heard of Luxury? So, okay, Luxury is a company that came on our stage, top five, and you guys chose them. And they went on and they just recently sold for $150 million, three founders. It happens, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna do a, a cheering. Here, Manny, you can have the, the, the handheld.
crowdfunding platform consulting. It's more than you just going online and filling out the forms. They will sit with you and they will help you to create an amazing crowdfunding um, opportunity. Okay, Manny? I'm really thinking who's gonna get the next 250K. All right, this is how it's gonna work. I'm going to bring two people up front, one up front and two. All right, this is gonna be hard. Actually, can you go up on, just everyone make a line. There you go, thank you. There you go, we got, we got to do it for time. So it's gonna be pretty simple. When I put my hand over their head, remember the loudest cheer keeps them here. Based on your cheer, you're controlling their destiny. Are you ready? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, our, our, our cheer you guys have it cut out. You gotta remember who got the loudest cheer. Duke, good job, Duke. Up next, we have Derek from Quick Legal. Hoala. You know what, hold on, Duke, why don't you come up over, move this way, have everyone move over a little bit so the crowd can see everyone. Just a little bit more, great. Thank you so much. And the name of your startup? ATAM2. Your cheer! <laughs> and the name of your startup is? Team Great Report. Okay, crowd, so I need the top two. Who are they? Go Bucks! Ladies and gentlemen, Bri Bridget, Maria, Gloria. Okay, I'm a little bit biased, so. Okay, he's biased, he said. Okay. We need the top two. Quick legal, come forward, please. And who was number two? John Horvath. And who was number three? Duke? Okay, so here we have our top three. You both stay up here, don't go away. You're in the top six. If this good Mandy, let's find a winner. In the center of San Francisco, Silicon Valley, are you ready? Yeah! yeah. It's cheer! Theater. 